always on the go, but the day just won't be one without your Hollywood fix. Let Golden State Media Concepts Entertainment Podcast take care of that. An all-inclusive look of pop culture. Thank you for tuning in to the GSMC Entertainment Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I'm your host, Jessica, and I am here to spill all the celebrity and entertainment tea that I have got. And guys, today, it, I have a lot of tea for you, so get your little cups ready, because I'm about to spill it. But before I do, I need to fill you in on like what's been happening all weekend. As you all know, I have three amazing little animals running around this house and one of them has been under the weather. My poor little Nora Bell, my princess of love. She has been sick all weekend and just like normal sick, which I'm not used to at all. And I know this sounds weird. Nora has some, she has a medical history and she has an underactive thyroid. She has a food allergy. And the road to figuring all of that out was pretty intense. So my husband and I are used to her being violently ill. I'm talking vomiting throughout the night, shaking, just sick, 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 sick. So when she is just regular sick, I'm like, I don't know what to do. I'm not used to it. I'm used to just like constantly being by her side and like cleaning up her being sick throughout the night and worrying and calling the vet. And this is just more of a, you know, she's not really being herself. She is super lethargic. She's tired. She doesn't want to play. And I'm like, is this normal? And I don't want to Google anything because I know if I Google something, my brain is just going to explode. It's just going to go into all the terrible, awful directions that it shouldn't. So after about 24 hours of her being, you know, not herself, I call the vet and again, she knows her medical history very, very well. We just did a full workup on her not too long ago. So talked to her in a vet tech and they said, listen, it's up to you if you want to bring her in. If not, it's totally okay. We'll just monitor her. Here's what, here's things you could do to just make her comfortable. So I do that and so far, like so good. She's slowly on the mend. So we're going to go through the rest of today. And as long as there's no, you know, little episodes that pop up, then I think we're going to be in the clear. You know, I have to go in and see the vet anyway, because I have to get a refill on her prescription medication this week. So anyway, that is what's going on with my little Nora Bell. So I've just been doing extra cuddles with her and it's been nice. You know, she just looks so sad with her big puppy dog eyes and I just love her so much. Oh, anyway, and you would think like she's the puppy too. So we also have a rescue Wilson who is a senior and he's fine. He had one little food allergy act um, flare up, I guess, once we gave him like beef or lamb or whatever instead of chicken and he didn't like it. And then I right, noted and that's it. That's it. The senior is fine. It's the puppy. The puppy. I mean, she's not really a puppy. She's like, what, three? It's like she's she's the one that oh, there's always an issue. So that's been the weekend. I have a insanely busy week coming up. So I'm going to share all of that fun news with you on next week's episode. So that's just my little life teaser. And that's all I'm going to talk about my life right now. We're done because there is a lot of episode moving forward today. We have a lot of celebrity news. We're a little bit all over the place with everything that's happening in Hollywood. It's more like a bunch of little tidbit stories. So we're talking Demi Lovato. We're talking Joaquin Phoenix. We're talking Chrissy Teigen. We're talking Kathy Hilton, Chris Jenner. We're talking, oh my goodness, like literally everybody, Caitlyn Jenner. It's just quite the episode and more, more, more of that. And then at the very end of today's episode in my final segment, I will be sharing with you a very controversial list. This list is movies that I believe are are overrated, not underrated, I apologize, are overrated. 
rated. So stay tuned. You're probably going to get angry with me, but that's okay. A lot of people do. So stay tuned, guys, um, to that. So without further ado, let's just dive Head first, dive right on into our first big story of the day. And that is Demi Lovato and Max Eric break up after being engaged for only two months. So Demi Lovato ended her whirlwind romance with Max Eric, calling off their engagement and ending their relationship of only six months total. So Demi's views on Max totally shifted the weeks like leading up to this past weekend and this whole tweet storm. It's in cra- it's been crazy if you've been following this story. So all of these posts started to come out of Max just lusting after Selena Gomez, Ariana Grande, and other like female celebrities. And they went viral. I mean, these videos are insane if you can find them. And I'm sure you can. It's super easy just to Google it. So he's like talking about how much he loves Selena Gomez. He loves Ariana Grande. And he is just like commenting on everyone's Insta. And this was in the past, right? So these were like years ago and leading up to his relationship with Demi. He would just like comment and hope for a comment back. And you know he probably sent DMs. I mean, he's definitely the type to do so. So he left LA to film a project in Atlanta and they were arguing a lot and Demi didn't want him to go without her. So she ultimately traveled with him for work and then she realized that, you know, she didn't fully trust him and she didn't trust his intentions. Like that's wild. That's so, oh, that, uh. but this story just keeps getting crazier. So multiple sources claim um, that, there were probably there were so many red flags and she was just kind of turning a blind eye and you know she started to think that he was being sketchy and even like kind of hinted that she started to feel that the only reason that he proposed to her was to get attention and again these are things like as the story unfolds totally would do like if he did propose to get attention which in my opinion he absolutely did like it totally worked so literally no one knew him from the young and the restless except for maybe my nana so like give me a break he would scout out like i said so many young female celebrities like hoping someone would answer his mating call and unfortunately in this case it was demi he's literally just so desperate and that desperation has got to be part of the reason why she broke it off with him and he's being so dramatic and the plot absolutely thickens so max takes to his Instagram pretty much daily and he like will post these like screen grabs of his notes app. So he goes to Instagram and he claims that he heard of the breakup from a tabloid while in the midst of shooting this upcoming movie, Southern Gospel. Quote, Imagine finding out the status of your your relationship through a tabloid while you're in the middle of filming a biopic movie about a pastor in a Christian church whose intention of the film is to help people. Oh, give me a break. Come on, Max. And then he posts a video of himself seemingly getting baptized by the movie director, who is also a pastor in Florida. Meanwhile, Demi is just chilling, eating Taco Bell and watching UFC. So and then, so after all of that, People Magazine, they published an article claiming that Max knew the relationship was over well before it hit the press. So liar, liar, pants on fire. But the drama queen just couldn't let it rest. So he took to Instagram yet again to pen another story, quote, I was on the set of my new movie, Southern Gospel, with crew and cast members right next to me who literally watched me open my phone, where I then opened a tabloid. This is the God's honest truth of how I found out about the ending of the engagement and have people from my film who saw the whole thing go down and help me get back into character to continue my job. I had cast and crew with families relying on me to do my job. That being said, please end this narrative and focus on other more important issues in the world. I love and forgive everyone involved. 
let us be, let us heal, God bless. Like there are so many problems with that statement. I literally don't even know where to start. So I'm going to try my best. So for having so many witnesses, no one has come forward yet defending poor little Max. Like, and then he goes, I had cast and crew with families relying on me to do my job. Like, calm down, Max. You're not the rock. Get over yourself. Uh, Please end this narrative. Bro, you started the narrative and you keep adding to it literally every single day. Max is now saying because he needs to be printed in the press every single day to stay relevant through Instagram stories, like someone please hire this man a publicist, by the way. He goes, please stop trying to thank you next me. Like adding that the two and then he adds that the two haven't officially ended anything with each other because they haven't spoken like thank you nexting me like of course this thirst monster is going to quote Ariana Grande in his pitch to win people and trying to win Demi over like what a loser and then he posted again he just keeps posting stuff on Instagram he posted a screenshot of like listening to Demi's music and praising her vocals and how she is the best female vocalist alive and that he has respected her since he was 15 years old so like if you're asking me to believe Demi Lovato who has been through hell and back or this like wannabe big shot celebrity who wants to end up with a famous woman just to make himself more famous then I'm going to sit here and I am going to side with Demi all day long. But wait, there's more. So Max later then accused Demi of breaking into like his rental home. So he shared a text from someone again, he shared a text on Instagram of some like so he shares this text. So someone in his camp was like, hey, like, are you at the house? Because there's someone like grilling out back. And he like, so he posts and he's like, no, no, like I'm shooting my movie and then post a picture of he like sent this guy a text a picture of like the set to prove that that's where he was and then he goes off and like has the audacity to call Demi a hypocrite saying if you're going to preach about anti-bullying why would you allow someone you love loved to be bullied by your fans for what telling the truth like but please guys guys before you get anything confused here he doesn't want any of this attention no no No, no, it's just too much. Too much. He just wants to focus on his art. He says, in another Instagram story, I entered the acting industry when I was 15 because I've been in theater since I was four, since the age of four, with a huge, relentless passion for the craft of acting and music, hence why I've had the honor of receiving four nominations from the Emmy Academy and on a Spielberg series. I finally am starring in a film that has great morals. I'm not interested in attention. I'm interested in doing my art. Please leave me be and let me focus on my film. <laughs> like, what a loser. Like, can I say that? Can I say that he's a loser? Because he's a loser. And I said it. Like, the Thank God Demi did not go through with any sort of marriage with this man. Like, girlfriend, you dodged a bullet. Enjoy your Taco Bell and just go on and live your best life. I am so sorry. He's such a thirst monster and is constantly posting on Instagram every single day, gaining attention. And you know he's feeding these stories to the tabloids too. And also... Side note, like, what are you doing on a movie set that you're going to open your phone and then you're just going to open a tabloid? Like, no, no. If anything, you have, like, Google alerts on your phone. So anytime your name is mentioned, you get an email. Like, that's what you did. But you didn't just be like, I'm just going to go on my phone. I'm just going to open Google. I'm just going to open a tabloid. Like, what tabloid are you reading? Like, stop it. They're magazines, not tabloids some respect. Anyway, so that is that on that drama. I will keep you guys updated. I am obsessed with being on Twitter and watching all of this unfold. It's really fascinating. Again, he's such a thirst monster. Nobody knows your name. And now the only 
claim to fame that you have is being the thirst monster who got dumped by Demi Lovato. So that is that on that. But guys, there's so much more celebrity tea and gossip for this episode. I mean, we're talking Chrissy Teigen. We're talking Caitlyn Jenner and so much more. And then at the end of this, I have a roundup of movies that I believe to be completely and utterly overrated. And now when I tell you I had so much fun putting together this list, like I've never felt like my true self than writing about movies that I absolutely despise that everyone else seems to love. So you're not going to want to miss that. So stay tuned. We will be right back after this quick break. Want to find out what movies to go see? Then check out the GSMC Movie Podcast. It's your ticket to the latest movies, whether it's a new blockbuster event, romantic, comedy, or action flick. This show has got it all covered. They talk some what to go see now. Don't bother. What's hot on Netflix and everything in between? That's gsmcpodcast.com backslash movie dash podcast. When it's all about the movies, it has to be this new show. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow them on Twitter. Visit gsmcpodcast.com for more info. Welcome back, my friends. I am still reeling over all this Demi Lovato drama. Still cannot believe. But so we have to move forward. The show must go on. I have to turn off my notifications for Twitter because I cannot read any more that comes from this. It's just I love this story. I don't know why, but it's just so much fun. So moving forward, we have to move forward. I know the last episode, I covered a lot of baby news, but I do want to make a quick shout out and a congratulations to Oscar winning actor Joaquin Phoenix and his fiance, Oscar nominated actress Rooney Mara, as they have welcomed their first child together, a son named River, after after Joaquin's late brother, who died in 1993 of a drug overdose outside of the Viper Room in West Hollywood. This is a beautiful sentiment by keeping his brother's legacy alive. I just, for those of you that don't know River Phoenix or his, like, his story or any of the movies that he's been in, please do yourself a favor. Go check them out. He died way too young at 23 years old. Joaquin Phoenix was there that night, along with Johnny Depp and some other famous names. It is a really tragic story. I don't really want to get into like the whole nuts and bolts of it right now. I just want it to be congratulations to Joaquin and Rooney and your baby boy, Little River Phoenix. I mean, I love it. It's so, so beautiful. So congratulations to the Happy Family. Switching gears um, with baby news, Chrissy Teigen is hospitalized after suffering bleeding during her pregnancy. She is on the mend after facing some scary complications during her pregnancy. On Sunday evening, the 34-year-old model who is pregnant with her third child, a little boy, revealed through a series of posts on her Instagram that she is spending the time in the hospital after weeks of mandatory bed rest due to excessive bleeding from her placenta. And when I say a lot of stories, like there were so many little dots, like she told the entire story. She was so open, so honest with what was going on. She was posting from her hospital bed. She said that she is halfway through her pregnancy and that her bleeding issues have been going on for a little less than a month. Although her bleeding was cause for concern, she assured her fans that the baby boy is healthy and stronger than Luna or Miles was at that point in her pregnancy. 
She said he moves a lot. He's moved so much earlier than they ever did. He's like a roly poly. We have like a million great pictures of him. He's just so different than they were. He's so strong and I'm so excited for him because he's so wonderful and just the strongest little dude. I can't wait for him. But despite her unborn child strength, Tegan also knows that he isn't quite in the clear just yet. Basically, he is the strongest, coolest little dude in the shittiest house. His house is just falling apart, she said. It didn't have a good foundation to begin with. He didn't have the strongest chance at the very beginning. It's just hard because there's not much you can do. I'm in that weird in-between time of it being really dangerous to try anything. Basically, if I can make it through the next few weeks, if little boy can make it through the next few weeks, then, you know, we can go from there and be able to kind of get through the danger zone or whatever. But we have to get through this first. So, yeah, it's scary. And it's scary in the way that you just there's just nothing you can do. Her husband, John John Legend, has also been staying in the hospital with her and even making her little bedside, bedside treats and sandwiches. I just really love and appreciate how open Chrissy Teigen is with her pregnancies, something that's not very popular in Hollywood. A lot of times people get pregnant and they keep a, a lot of it like shrouded in secrecy, which is fine. Like you don't have to be open like that to the world with something so personal. But, you know, Chrissy Teigen is completely transparent. And even with her previous pregnancies, she's been honest that she had them through IVF. Even with this one, like I said, she's been so candid about how difficult it's been. She's sharing everything in real time while lying in a hospital bed. So it's normalizing that not all pregnancies are easy. So often we see an announcement and of a pregnancy and a few months later, there's a baby and there's so much that can happen in between, so much that does happen in between. And listen, some moms, you know, they get pregnant and they have a beautiful, easy pregnancy, but that's not the case for a lot of mommies out there. So I really appreciate that Chrissy Teigen uses her platform to be really open that pregnancy isn't always this magical and easy experience for everybody. Do we have to be so involved in the private matter of Chrissy's life? No, but it doesn't for one second go unnoticed or unappreciated. I wish Chrissy and her family and her little bun in the oven well during all of this, and I really hope that the family gets through this together and I cannot wait for her to introduce her little boy at the end of all of this. So I'm putting out all the good vibes, all the good energy, all the good things that you you could put towards her. So I will keep you updated on that as well. Hopefully all nothing but good news. So changing gears completely, um, some Real Housewives news because you all know that I am obsessed with Real Housewives. So Kathy Hilton is not interested in being a Real Housewife full time, but she's open to being a series regular or a friend of Housewife or in this case, sister of Housewife. I am pretty thrilled that she's not going to be a full-time housewife. I'm not a big fan of this family, and I feel bad saying that. I'm sure they're all, like, nice people individually or whatever. But there's just, like, something that makes me really uncomfortable about them. Like, the whole thing with Kyle and Kim, like, when Kim was on the show, was just so uncomfortable to watch. I mean, granted, it gave some really wonderful moments for TV, but all in all, it's just weird. Like, it's weird that – so Kyle's the one who's always yelling at people, well, you have to be honest. You have to be honest. You have to be honest. But at the same time, like, she's never – her and Kim especially together were just never honest, and they never talked about anything, and they got mad when people talked. But there's a reason people are talking, and I feel like Kathy would bring that same weird, awkward energy to the show – And I'm glad that we can just avoid it. Like, Kyle and Kim had a wonderful platform to use to bring awareness to substance abuse. And they didn't do it. Instead, it was like this weird secrecy thing. And I hated that. I just didn't like Kim as a housewife at all. And I just absolutely hated, and I cannot stress that enough, 
how whenever someone would talk about her, she'd be like, why do you have to talk about me? Why? Because it's the show, Kim. It's what you signed up for. Of course, people are going to talk to you. It's a bunch of women. Like, if, what, what are they going to do this uh, constantly around you? Just like talk about the weather. But she had no problem talking about other people. So I don't know. I'm just – anyway, I'm really happy that another sister in that family is not joining the show. Another person not joining the show, Kris Jenner. She will not be joining Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, but Caitlyn Jenner and Sophia Hutchins may be. So Sophia Hutchins and Caitlyn Jenner have signaled publicly that they would want to be part of the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. And now we're being told that they're actively trying to make it happen Word on the street is that Sophia recently sat down for dinner with former Housewives castmate Eileen Davidson, and they talked about the show and the possibility of Sophia filling the vacancy. And Eileen Davidson might have some uh, some pull being a former housewife. I don't know if it's kind of like New York where Bethany, I mean, she's a heavy hitter, Bethany, but she provides a list to Andy of, I think these women would be good for the show. So I'm wondering if every ex-castmate kind of has that, not pull, but they they provide names to Andy and to Bravo. So we're also told, um, you know, they ch- talked about Eileen's experience on the show and Sophia got enough feedback that she decided that Real Housewives of Beverly Hills was something that she indeed wanted to do. So Sophia's camp reached out to production and the sides have been talking about the possibility of her joining the show, possibly as a main cast member. And Sophia's roommate, Caitlin. Jenner would also make appearances. So it would be Sophia would be the housewife and Caitlyn Jenner would be friend of housewife or roommate of housewife. (laughs) Um, So Sophia does seem like a good fit as she does know Lisa Rinna socially and Caitlyn knows Harry Hamlin. So it would be organic and natural for them to come aboard the show. So that is exciting. I'm not mad at that casting if it goes through. Speaking of Lisa Rinna, she is coming out with a lipstick line. So Lisa officially unveiled her new brand, Rinna Beauty, on Instagram, along with a first look at her lip products. Her line will debut with three lip kits, which all include a lipstick, a gloss, and a liner, all in neutral tones. The three sets are called Birthday Suit, Legends Only, and No Apologies. So they come with various gloss and lipstick hues, but each contains one of a universal liner. So she said that Lisa said that she wanted to start with some real basics and then go crazy from there. So here we have yet again another celebrity entering the makeup world. If I'm being totally honest, which I want to be with you, I will most likely make the purchase. So all that smack that I talk and here I am, I'm like, I will probably buy this. I wonder if the lipsticks will all be matte. So if they are not matte lipsticks, then I will definitely be making the purchase. I am so happy that matte lipstick, that whole matte lipstick trend is making its exit I love gloss. I wish with all of my heart and soul that I can still get my hands on that NYC roll-on gloss that I wore in middle school. So the fact that her lip kits all come with a gloss is kind of what seals the deal for me. And I do like, like we have very similar skin tones, so I can see kind of what it's going to look like on me. I have naturally dark darker lips. So matte tones always make me look like I'm dead. They don't look good on me. It just the matte over my lip color just looks terrible. But I'm wondering if hers are going to work, but she has a gloss and I love me a good gloss. Unlike the like the Kylie, it's just like very matte heavy. I don't do the matte matte on my lip doesn't look good. It's I don't like matte lipstick always looks so drying. I never really got on the trend. I always liked more of the cream lipstick. And I, like I said, gloss, love some gloss. If roll-on gloss made a comeback, that would be ideal. So I will purchase when it becomes available and I will let you know how it is. So that is that on kind of some hodgepodge of some celebrity gossip, but there's still more. There's still more 
news to be shared. I am talking Tom Cruise. I'm talking Harry and Meghan. And I'm even talking Gwyneth Paltrow. And then after that, I'm talking about the movies that I think are completely overrated. And when I tell you I never had more fun putting together a list than this, like it was so much fun. It was so fun. I cannot wait to tell you the movies that I absolutely hate. Don't at me, BRB. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. We're back. <laughs> um, guys, this has been quite a fun show. I'm kind of able to rant and I like talking about so many different celebrities in one show. I think it makes it really fun and a little editorial, I guess. It's fun. I like it. And because I'm on a roll, let's just keep it going. Tom Cruise is going to space. That was a sentence I just said. Tom Cruise is going to space. Working with SpaceX pioneer Elon Musk, as well as with NASA, to film an action-adventure movie in space. So earlier this year, it was reported that Tom Cruise was working with Elon Musk's SpaceX on a project that would see a movie actually shot in outer space. While we might call something like this a silly rumor, coming from anybody else, like Tom Cruise has built a reputation of not only being willing to perform extreme stunts himself, but actually looking for opportunities to do so. Now, a Twitter account that follows space exploration has posted a schedule for future space travel missions that seems to confirm that both Tom Cruise and one of his frequent collaborators, writer-director Doug Lehman, and they have currently booked to go into the International Space Station in October of 2021 on board SpaceX's Dragon Axiom. Oh my gosh, that was a mouthful. And there's still an empty seat on that flight if you would like to go. So the fact that both Tom Cruise and Doug Lehman are confirmed on this trip and Lehman is currently listed as both the writer and director of his new SpaceX related project, it would seem to confirm that yes, Tom Cruise really is going to space to make a movie though it doesn't give us any real details about what the movie is. It's sort of wild to imagine that sometime in 2022 or 2023, we might get a movie that includes scenes that are actually filmed in space. Like, that is mind-boggling. Like, my head explodes. And I can't believe that it's listed as a tourist flight. How long before going into space is considered, like, a normal vacation? You know, some families go to Hawaii, others go to Europe, some to Disney World, and then there are going to be those kids that get pulled out of school for a week to go to space. Like, that, I can't imagine. Like, I remember being a kid and going to, like, flying cars came first before, before going up into space, and we don't have flying cars yet. I mean, we're working on all electric, so that's going to be, I think, within the next 15 years, 15, 20 years, definitely seeing all electric cars. 
So I think that's cool. Like I think about my niece and who knows when she gets a car or maybe her second car, like maybe her first real car that she'll buy her. Like, who knows how they're going to do it. But in her 20s, like everything's going to be electric and that could be normal for her where people who drive gas cars, that's almost like people who drive manual now, you know, like people do it. It's just not as common and it's more of like a retro thing to do and not everyone knows how to drive manuals. So maybe no one will know how to drive gas. It's just interesting to see. And then maybe by the time she has kids, they're going to be going to space instead of Disney World. Like that's crazy to me. That's insane for me to think. My niece is four, by the way, for those asking to kind of gauge how long time, you know, how much time we have. So that's fascinating to me. I'm really curious to see how all of that is going to pan out with space. And I'm Wow. Who wants to be on that flight with Tom Cruise and watch him film a movie up in space? That's crazy to me. Oh, I love it, though. Um, what I don't love is that Harry and Meghan, and I don't think I need to remind you of their titles, have denied reports that they are not doing a reality. Well, they've denied reports that they are doing a reality TV show. There you go. So Meghan and Harry they're not entering the world of reality TV, and that breaks this podcaster's heart. So it was reported early that the Duke and Duchess of Sussex were planning a fly-on-the-wall show for their new Netflix deal. However, a spokesperson for the couple denies the claims that came from the UK paper The Sun, which said that the couple wanted to give people, quote, a glimpse into their lives while highlighting some of the causes most important to them. So they're not doing it. Um, there were jokes that they were going to do meet the Markles or something like the only way is Sussex, which is a take on the UK reality series. The only way is Essex. So like I said, this podcaster is absolutely devastated because I would binge watch that show in a heartbeat. Like, I think it would be fun to see how this Canadian personality and this British personality clash day to day, because you know that they do. All couples clash at some point. I would love to see their famous friends, like George Clooney on a reality TV show, would just be gold. And then I think it would do wonders for all the causes that they're trying to help. I'm just saying it would be a really fun show. It's something that they should absolutely reconsider. I mean, they don't have to abide by any of this British protocol anymore. So, so why not do, why not do the show? It would be fun. <sighs> but again, all of my dreams just destroyed. Oh, maybe she could be a real housewife. You know, she lives in California in LA, she could totally be a real housewife of Beverly Hills. Now that I would absolutely, absolutely love. Harry would be friend, would be husband of housewife, and it would be magical. It would be TV gold. So Andy Cohen, please, please do stuff. Megan just wouldn't deal with any of the shenanigans though. But I would love to see her. I think Megan and um, Erica Jane would be really good friends and I would love to see that dynamic. So if we can make that happen, that would be great. So lastly, moving on, some and this is our last piece of celebrity gossip for today. Goop founder Gwyneth Paltrow posted in her birthday posted a picture of herself in her birthday suit to celebrate her 48th birthday. Her daughter Apple <clears throat> quickly commented, mom, like, oh my God, so embarrassed. But come on, like, I'm not going to trash this image. It's phenomenal. Do I hate the hashtag? Absolutely. Goop jeans, whatever. But I'm not here to throw shade at Gwyneth Paltrow. She looks incredible. I can only hope to look that amazing when I'm 48. She looks phenomenal. You can go see it on Instagram. She looks effing beautiful. I just really can't, though, with goop sometimes. Like, I just can't. I can't. So for, like, she's selling a candle. I'm sure everybody's heard this story, but I just have to talk about it. So she's selling a candle for $75. I don't, I don't understand why anyone would buy a candle for $75 because that is the definition of burning your money. So she sells this candle for $75, and it's aptly called, This Smells Like My Vagina. 
because it's supposed to smell like her vagina. And she's had staff smell her vagina to make sure that the candle smells like her vagina. It is described to have a funny, gorgeous, sexy, and beautifully unexpected scent. You can also get um, this smells like my orgasm as well. So like I said, if the staff had to smell her to make sure the candle smelled like her, what did they do to make sure smells like my orgasm smelled like her orgasm? Um, So... I don't know. And again, I who pays I just want to meet the person who pays $75 for a candle. Like I'm just not in that tax bracket. I don't understand. I don't think I ever will understand. I buy my candles from Home Goods and that's about it. When I see a candle for like $12.99, I'm just like no th- that is pretty steep. Like give me the $7.99 the 9.99 ones. Again, totally different different tax bracket. But when I When I talk crap about something, I have to also give credit when credit is due. We have to play fair. So I went on the Goop website as I was like reading about her and like Goop jeans and whatever. But she does sell these beautiful, absolutely stunning, like these pink glass dessert plates. And then she also has these pink glass mixing bowls. They're so beautiful. This shade of pink is out. I love pink. I have a pink office. I think pink is a beautiful, beautiful color. And the this shade of pink is called Tuscan pink. It's right up my alley. It's so, so gorgeous. But I cannot justify the price for these things. Like everything that she sells on Goop is just completely out of my price range. So I can make fun of it, but I can also be envious of it. And one day, who knows, Christmas is right around the corner. Maybe my husband will love me enough to get me some plates and some mixing bowls for like nearly 200 and change. <sighs> so that I do love. I do love that. Um, but anyway, so Goop, not really my jam. Totally out of my price range. But I also really hate Poosh. And I think you all know that. And I hate that Poosh sounds exactly like Goop. I does. I mean, I'm... Sure, they're friends, but is Gwyneth like low key kind of annoyed at Courtney for having a comp- basically the exact same business model, but called Poosh and not Goop? You know, Courtney is going to come out with a Poosh candle that smells like her, like maybe smells like her armpits or something. Like, oh, I eat vegan and I drink green juice, and now this is what my armpit smells like. You know, that's going to happen. I'm calling it right now. So that is that on that. I can't anymore with Poosh and Goop. Congratulations, Gwyneth Paltrow, for looking sickeningly gorgeous. Good for you. Keep doing what you're doing with those Goop products and crystal candles. Crystal candles. Oh, my God. Crystals. Just crystals. Guys, we need to take another break. I feel like time has just flown by. I cannot believe we're already entering my favorite segment of the show. When we come back, I am going to tell you about the movies that I absolutely hate and that I think are overrated. You're not going to want to miss it. It will be me at my finest. Golden State Media Concepts bring you Book Review Podcast, a haven for bookworms of all ages and the widest genres from mystery to memoirs, romance to comedy, fantasy to sci-fi. If you love to read, this is the podcast for you. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast. Welcome back, my friends. Thanks for staying with me. You have reached my favorite part of the episode, and that is where I share a list of my, usually my favorite things, but in this case, my least favorite things, where you kind of get to know me a little bit better and a little bit more as a podcast host. We talked a lot of celebrity gossip, some great news, some not so great news, some fun news. And now it's time, the moment that I have been waiting all episode to share. These are the movies that I think are overrated. These are movies that people love. They're critically acclaimed. They're Oscar winning. 
they, and I just hate them. And I will explain to you why, but these are movies I absolutely cannot stand. And they are in no particular order. Um, if anything, they start from my least favorite based off of how I, I was just like free flow writing, just was really feeling myself. <laughs> like I am must I must be in some type of mood today. But this was a fun list to share. If you love any of these movies, please don't at me because I really don't care if I'm being totally honest. Uh, these are my this is my opinion and my opinion only. But so let's start with Avatar. And it pains me. It pains me to say how much I hate this movie because I love James Cameron. Avatar somehow became the highest grossing film of all time when it was released in 2009. The visual graphics were just out of this world. Literally, they were beautiful. Like when this movie was being advertised and the build up to it, the graphics, is, I think, has to be what sold people because it wasn't the plot. It was not the plot. And because it was just the graphics, Avatar could have been nine minutes long and it would have been enough for me. All it is is Fern Gully meets Pocahontas. So if you know Fern Gully, you know Pocahontas, then you already know and you've already seen Avatar. But then there's Avatar 2. Like no one asked for this. And Avatar 2 is officially 100% complete, according to James Cameron. And like I couldn't look forward to anything less than that. Like I don't care about Avatar 2. And I love James Cameron. I love him with all of my heart. I love Aliens. I love Terminator 2 Judgment Day. Titanic is one of the greatest pieces of American cinema, and I will die on that hill. But you're giving us Avatar, and I don't want five of them. And guess, five. I said five. There's supposed to be five Avatar movies. So Avatar 2 is coming to us in 2022. Avatar 3 is coming in 2024, Avatar 4 is coming in 2026, and Avatar 5 is coming in 2028. This is absolute madness, especially knowing that he could give us better movies. So Avatar 1, one of the most overrated movies of all time. I hated it. I loved a total of nine minutes of it, and that was visually, and that's about it. I don't understand why he's giving us five. The next movie that I think is absolutely, completely, and truly overrated, Shakespeare in Love. I truly in my soul can't believe that this movie won the Oscar for Best Picture, but it did. It somehow beat out Saving Private Ryan and even Life is Beautiful. The film depicts a fictional a fictional love affair between playwright William Shakespeare and Viola de Lesseps, played respectively by Joseph Fiennes and Gwyneth Paltrow, speaking of, while Shakespeare was writing Romeo and Juliet. Several characters are based on historical figures, and many of the characters' lines and plot devices allude to Shakespeare's plays, which is totally fine for a movie that you would see in an English class, but not an Academy Award-winning film. It's absolutely absurd. It's basically William Shakespeare fan fiction. That's all Shakespeare in Love is. And I think Saving Private Ryan that year was definitely on track to win. I mean, people loved it. It was out for like so many months before Shakespeare in Love. It was so critically acclaimed. No, I don't think anyone talked bad about uh, Saving Private Ryan. And then Harvey Weinstein just came in and campaigned and campaigned for Shakespeare in Love. And I hate saying this, but who knows what else? And he used his power and he had to have made sure that that movie won as many gold statues as possible. He is such a creep. Knowing that Harvey Weinstein had like such a big hand in this film and oh God, terrible terminology. Um, Shakespeare in Love was terrible. I hated it. Like I said, awful don't understand why. Okay, maybe it wasn't awful, but it was not an Oscar-winning performance, Oscar-winning film. And honestly, I watched it and I watched it on my laptop while I sat on my bedroom floor and my mouth was just like agape afterwards. I was like, I cannot believe this one. I cannot believe because I watched it after it won the Academy Award because I was like, oh, it must be good. It won the Academy Award of lies, 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 lies. Awful. 
Speaking of awful, Twilight. You might not be shocked to see this on the list, but it's still shocking that these films are as successful as they have become. A teenage vampire falling in love with a human is the only thing you need to know about Twilight to know that it didn't deserve any buzz that it got. It was terrible. It was terrible. I cannot say terrible enough. Besides the fact that the story took everything cool about vampires and turned it into a joke. I mean, it was atrocious. Like vamp- You can have a good vampire movie because like the bones of what makes a good vampire movie are good. Like you can create something super compelling, but then you made them shine like diamonds in the sun and then burst into flames. Like it's awful. It's a love story. Like Oh, Robert Pattinson, like, I'm pretty sure he still hates these movies. And that says something when someone in the movie absolutely hates it. And like Kristen Stewart is just terrible. It's terrible. Like there's like these weird stalker vibes and abuse. It's weird. It's so, so weird. And I don't understand why it's so good. It's literally one of the worst movies I've ever seen in my entire life. And I don't, it's, th- speaking of fan fiction, the Twilight series started out as fan fiction for, I believe it was Fifty Shades of Grey. I'm just saying, or was it Fifty Shades of Grey was Twilight? They're both terrible. Actually, Fifty Shades of Grey should be on the list. We'll save that one for, for the next time I do overrated movies. Twilight was terrible. I hated every second of it. And I left the movie theater. I saw it with friends and we left the movie theater and we went to dinner afterwards. And I was so angry the entire dinner. I cannot believe I was forced to sit and endure such terrible 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 filmmaking in my life Uh, so that's uh that's twilight next on the list this is a controversial one uh boogie nights totally overrated my husband and i watched a lot of movies when we started dating because you get to really know someone by the types of movies that they enjoy watching in their free time and he would not shut up about boogie nights so one night we sat down and we watched it And I must say, it is a miracle that we are married today. That movie was absolutely awful. Almost as much of a waste of time as Twilight was. So Burt Reynolds was in the movie and Burt Reynolds even hated it. So you can watch a clip online of Burt Reynolds sitting with Conan O'Brien and Conan, who likes the movie, so like points off for Conan, and I hate saying that. Um, So he is talking with Burt Reynolds and Burt Reynolds is like, nope, hated it. And I didn't really get along with Paul Thomas Anderson either. And what is it? Conan goes, oh, I hear you wanted to punch him in the face. And Burt Reynolds is like, nah, I just wanted to punch him. (laughs) Like, hated it. Like, he hated it so much he didn't even watch it. He didn't even watch it. And to be honest, like, I don't really care about, like, Anderson films anyway. Like, Paul Thomas Anderson just doesn't do it for me as a filmmaker. So that could also be part of it. Um, Like, so take inherent vice for a reason i saw that because in theaters i saw it because i love joaquin phoenix that's why i went to go see it but to this day i could not tell you one single thing about the movie not one i actually forgot that it existed until i looked it up when i was trying to look for other paul thomas anderson movies for reference so the so Inherit Vice, like, I don't think by popular opinion people love it, so that's why I didn't make the list. But Boogie Nights absolutely did. Terrible movie. Hated every second of it. The fact that actors in the movie regret doing it just speaks volumes. Terrible. And finally, the last movie to make the list, because I'm only doing five, because we're going to break this up into several segments, Chicago. So many people love this movie, the 2002 film adaptation of the iconic musical. And I say iconic in quotes because I also think I'm the only person in the world who doesn't like the stage version as well. Like, it just didn't do it for me. Like, Richard Gere singing and tap dancing doesn't cut it for me. It wasn't fun to watch. I thought it was overproduced. It's just like this. And it's another like questionable best picture winner. It beat out Gangs of New York, um, The Hours, Lord of the Rings, The Two Towers and The Pianist. I actually thought that The Pianist would win that year because it's like that super artsy Oscar type movie. But no, for some reason, Chicago won. I don't know why. Uh, Catherine Zeta-Jones was also in it. Whatever happened to her, she seemed to kind of disappear. Haven't seen much of her lately. She also won the the Oscar for that performance as well. 
This is a movie a lot of people really like. A lot of people have posters of this movie, especially when it came out. People raved about this movie, saw it in theaters, hated it, did not like it, thought it was a waste of my time. It just wasn't just wasn't good. But then again, I, I probably didn't give it that fair of a shot because I also am in the minority because I didn't like, like I said, the stage production of it either. I just don't like the story. So maybe it's unfair that it's in this list. But again, it's something that a lot of people love and I absolutely despise. So that is the list this week. Who knows? I think next week, maybe I will keep this momentum going for the next episode and give you more films that I feel are overrated. Maybe I'll branch out to TV shows. But guys, that is all the time that I have for you guys today. Until next time, I am Jessica, and thank you for listening to the GSMC Entertainment Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I would like to ask you to please remember to subscribe to this show and please write a beautiful, glowing review. You know, that really helps me and that really helps us a lot. Also, if you can please follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, I would really appreciate it. Come say hi at GSMC on underscore entertainment. I would love to hear from you. Guys, thank you so much. Have a wonderful morning, afternoon, night, whenever it is that you're listening to this podcast, and I will catch you the next episode. Bye-bye. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Entertainment Podcast, part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network from movies to music, from sports to entertainment, and even weird news. You can also follow us on Twitter and on Facebook. Thank you, and we hope you have enjoyed today's program.